All right, everyone, welcome back to science. We are now moving on to lesson 1.4 of our evolutionary history unit. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in today, taking a look at a couple of fossils here. Um, we've got species A and species B. They're both imaginary species, but what I want you to do is look at the body structure. We've been starting to talk about why body structure is important for evolutionary scientists. And I want you to think about these five different um, structures in orange down here. And take a second, go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to write out what are all of the structures that you notice that these two species have out of this list in orange. So go ahead, take a second to pause the video, jot it down, or either think through which are the five that you think um, both species A and species B share. So go ahead and pause right now. All right. So if you um, started to think about these two species, um, what are the things that they have in common? Um, and starting to think about would they have a common ancestor? We want to look at those uh, structures in their body that are similar. So hopefully you notice they both have a skull. They both have front limbs. So remember limbs are kind of a general term we use for arms or flippers or legs. Um, all of those are considered limbs. Another thing that they have in common is that, that they both have a backbone. They both have a tail. But then the thing that this species A is missing that species B has is its back limb. So take a second to jot down, what do you think? Based on what we've learned so far, do you think that these two species have a common ancestor? So again, I want you to just pause the video for a second, answer this question right here. Do you think the two species have a common ancestor? Okay. So as we go into today's unit, there's gonna be a couple things that are important in helping us determine whether or not species have a common ancestor. So one of the vocabulary words that we're gonna to start to use is this term descendant species. So a descendant species is a more recent species that evolved from an ancestor population. So we're gonna take a look here at sort of, if you've ever seen a family tree, we're gonna look closer at what we call the tree of life, which shows all um, different animals, how they are all related. And this is just a piece of it. But you can see here that the ostrich and the crocodile would be considered descendant species um, because they broke off on this chain right here from reptiles and evolved from reptiles being their ancestor population. So an ostrich and a crocodile, both are types of descendant species. Another vocab word that we're gonna talk about which is kind of the opposite of a descendant is um, when two species have a common ancestor. So an ancestor is an older population from which two or more newer species descended. And if we look at that same part of the tree, the common ancestor population is just um, reptiles, the ones that came before and eventually split off and evolved into birds and crocodiles. So those are two terms that we're gonna to want to be making sure that we're thinking through today. Again, we've got descendant species and common ancestors. So we're gonna go back to the diagram from our 1.3 reading, and we're gonna take a little bit closer look now that we know those two terms, descendants and common ancestor populations. And what I want you to do is, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video again. And there's four questions here, and I really want you to dig into this text feature because there's a lot of information in here. And this is a good time for you to start to practice your understanding of those words, descendants and common ancestors. So take a second to go ahead and pause the video, and then we'll briefly go over the answers in a second. Okay, so hopefully you were able to look at this and notice that the blue whale and the human, because they're in the same place as what we saw on the other side where the ostrich and the crocodile were at, those are descendants. 
Um, and then if we start to think about body structures, you should have compared these bullet points down here to find what are some common structures that they had that are going to show us that those two species um, <clears throat> are related to one another. And then the last one, hopefully you thought through kind of why might this be helpful for a paleontologist? Um, lots of different things you could have had for that answer, but as long as you thought it through, maybe you said something like it helps them to organize what is, which species is related to which one. It might help them to organize where their different structures are located. Um, any, anything that you could have thought of so long as you thought through this one and thought about how could this diagram help you as a paleontologist would be a correct answer. So we also talked about that, um, I previewed that I was gonna show you this thing that's called the tree of life. So this shows our unit we're learning about right now is all about evolutionary history. This tree of life shows how every single species um, evolved from a single celled organism millions of years ago. So you can see as it goes, there's just branches and branches and branches. And if you look closely, you might notice some of these that are further branches away that might sound familiar. There's birds right here and reptiles right here. And this is a super complicated tree of life that shows all of the different organisms and branches that could be possible, which is pretty cool. Um, we're gonna be using, and you're gonna notice later in our simulation, that we're gonna be looking at a tree of life, but it's not gonna be quite this complicated.